Today, I'm gonna to show you how to set up a wallet, specifically Argent X, and use the StarkNet blockchain. It's a layer two scaling solution to Ethereum. There's multiple reasons why you'd wanna be involved, if for no other reason, okay, than to get airdrop eligibility. And I kid you not, you're likely to make thousands of dollars just by participating with this blockchain. My name is Vosk, I'm a full-time crypto nerd. You're on the Vosk on YouTube channel. I'll drop these links down below, which will take you exactly where you wanna go. But here's the deal with Argent Wallet, okay? You can download it on your phone just as an application, whether you have iOS, Android, whatever. Uh, but what I prefer to do is do a lot of my activity on the computer. So in this case, I'm gonna be using Argent X, and I've already installed it on Brave. Same thing, installation for Brave as it is for Google Chrome. Brave is just basically a clone of Chrome. You literally just go to the Chrome web store and click add to browser. That's it, okay? What you can also do is install this for Firefox. And I'm gonna click add to Firefox. Click add, done. Just like that, I've added it. But we're not quite there yet. So when we click it on our first time setup, this is where we're gonna be brought. You can restore an existing wallet if you want to. You can insert private keys, right? Seed phrases, whatever you want to do on that front. I highly recommend you just create a new wallet. You don't get to get around that. Uh, so you got to accept those. StarkNet is in alpha at the time of recording this video. Basically the saying, if anything goes wrong, it's not anyone's fault. I understand that. Then you're going to put your password in, right? So I'll just put in YouTube guy 129 and then it starts creating the wallet. Bang, and it's done. You can follow them on Twitter, but that's not necessary. So that's how easy it is to get set up and get started. It puts you on the test net first. Where you want to go now is the main net, alpha main net, stark net. So you click main net, you click create accounts and you just want a standard account. And just like that, you are in the game, okay? They don't force you to record your seed phrase like many other wallets do to get started for better and worse. Please understand this. This is so critical. You've set up the wallet and before you do anything, this is what you should do if you care about your coins. You need to click set up account recovery and you wanna save the recovery phrase, okay? So it generates these words. You need to save them and in the correct order, right? So we have one through 12, they gotta be saved. Ideally save them multiple times, multiple places, right? Write them down, keep a paper copy, write another paper copy down, give it to someone you trust with their life, maybe maybe your dad, maybe not your dad, okay? Uh, so you have a backup there. What you could also do is give like six words to your dad and six words to your best friend. And then unless they, uh, you know, commingle and get the master combination. Neither of them could actually access your wallet, but you've got backups in other places, right? So then it's like, hey, if you written your phrase down, you're like, yep. And they don't even make you double check. A lot of these wallets will quiz you. But again, that's crucial information there. Absolutely critical. Now you've completed the setup. The process, of course, naturally is gonna be very similar for you if you're using the app version. A quick note, just what exactly is StarkNet anyway, right? So it's a decentralized validity rollup, often referred to as ZK rollup, layer two network over Ethereum, right? It's supposed to bring scalability, right? They've got general purpose here. They have composability, right? They're three pillars. Basically, Ethereum, as a blockchain is failing to scale. So all of these alternatives are popping up. We recently saw Arbitrum pop up, do well, gain traction, and then airdrop their ARB token, quickly becoming a top 50 cryptocurrency and amassing a market cap in the billions. People think that StarkNet could be one of the next ones. ZK Sync is also looking to get a lot of this limelight for airdrops, layer two, and a ZK rollup focus. But Starkware and their StarkNet are not just gonna sit idly by. So the next thing you wanna do to really get started is you're gonna need to get some coins on chain. Starkgate.starknet.io, again, I'll drop all these links down below, will be the link that takes you where you wanna go. 
Uh, so you will need to connect your Ethereum wallet. You will need to connect your StarkNet wallet. Uh, so I already have my MetaMask set up. Uh, and I'm assuming you know what that is. If you don't, make sure to check out our starter guide on how to set up MetaMask and getting really face deep in all this DeFi stuff, right? And I have my StarkNet account set up, uh, different than the private key I just showed you, so don't try to rob your boy. So from here, I can go ahead and bridge over some Ethereum. And I've already bridged Ethereum using the Starkgate official bridge. So now what I'd like to try doing is bridging Ethereum. If this will work, it was not working earlier. Uh, so I want to bridge from Ethereum to StarkNet. My wallets are already connected and that's good. That's cool to see. So I'll put 0 0.05 Ethereum. Nothing crazy here, right? Well, that's what it said earlier. What's been cool about Orbiter is they've helped me bridge to other chains and get lower fees. There's a couple other alternatives, but let's just go ahead and keep it classic. Let's, let's bridge with the official uh, bridge here. Getting slapped in the face with a $10 gas fee. You can't just oh, Ethereum, how I abhor using you. I love the Ethereum ecosystem, but geez, I mean, $10 to transact, I'm doing a $100 transaction, 10% of my money just was obliterated in gas. I mean, we're driving around, forget V8s, we got like V29 gas guzzlers. But alas, that's the situation. StarkNet is a rapidly developing ecosystem. DeFi Llama is, is a great tool here. Uh, so we're going to go on DeFi Llama. We're going to go to Chains. And then we're going to navigate to StarkNet. Wasn't popping up quickly for me there. Uh, so you can just go slash chain slash uh, StarkNet to get you there where you want to go. You can see at the time recording this, not a lot of uh, uh, <laughs> options here. But that's a great reminder of just how early we are. The earlier you are, the more likely you are to be rewarded by these protocols you're using, by that layer two, which would be StarkNet, and their obviously incoming Stark token. Okay, so let's just take 10K swap. They have the highest TVL total value locked, right? It's an AMM, automated market maker. And I'm not gonna go on forever in this video, I just wanna show you the basics. This is a decentralized exchange. And you can go in here and complete a trade. So let's say I wanted some die, right? And I could put it in 0 0.015. And when it comes to transactions, I like to complete transactions worth $25. It's best to complete transactions on multiple days using higher capital. Like, like if you can afford to throw hundreds of dollars around every transaction, do that. If you can't, that's okay. Try to get to $25 per transaction. It's best to transact on multiple days with multiple protocols. And also not just multiple days, but also distinct, unique months. Those things really compounded, leading people to achieving many more ARB tokens in the Arbitrum airdrop. Others will follow suit as these projects continue to refine what makes people eligible to receive their token. So as we can see here, pops up, ask me if I wanna participate, I'm like, yep, that's what I want, confirm. You can see that, and, and I like, Arjun X is a nice wallet here. Dark theme, good UX. We can see that I'm going to basically lose 0.015 ETH, and I will be gaining 25.69 DAI. DAI is a stable coin. Uh, and you can see that approved, the swap, uh, my account one here, we're on the main net, and this will cost me an estimated 65 cents worth of Ethereum with a maximum fee of $1.94. I will say I am disappointed in StarkNet as far as how much these transactions cost. They are much cheaper than Ethereum, yes, uh, but they are still very expensive. I mean, percentage-wise, that was a huge percentage of my actual trade. Comparing that to, say, Arbitrum, Arbitrum has been lightning fast and super cheap, and that's just a good time. The Genesis Collection on Aura Pool. This isn't just some non-fungible token NFT thing. These are hash rate collectibles. Each of these hash rate collectibles are designed by the award-winning digital artiste Deluxe 3. No, it's actually just Deluxe with 3. 
Aura Pool is a new NFT marketplace, and the first collection here are hash rate collectibles. Basically, they're powered by an underlying Bitcoin mining contract. The holders receive daily BTC rewards straight to their Bitcoin wallet. Learn more about this with the link out in the video description below. Another heads up is why you're doing all this. Okay, it's called uh, StarkNet.id. So StarkNet ID is basically like ENS. ENS is the Ethereum name service. It's an all-in-one identity service on StarkNet. These historically have proven to bring airdrops, but they are also most likely to be adopted by many of these applications. And instead of trying to send uh, coins to, you know, OX, O129, 402, I can instead go ahead and send it to John Paul dot Stark. And so in this scenario, I'll just go for the obvious username that I want, which is just simply Voscoin, right? So I'll go ahead and bump this down just to one year. Let's, let's see where this goes, right? And uh, we'll register from layer two, which will be the Stark net that we're on. What's very cool is that Arginex has some verified uh, dApps here, decentralized application smart contracts, right? Uh, so this is reassuring. This is like, yeah, I'm interacting with the right website. Um, it shows me I'm going to lose 0.009 ETH, which is about $15.68. I'm going to get plus one NFT, an unknown NFT. So we have multiple actions taking place here. We have approve, mint, buy, set address to domain. So, well, we'll just go ahead and do that. So I clicked over on identities and I clicked the plus sign and it prompted me with this. Now we get reminded that patience is a virtue. But what we're doing here in essence is, so we set up our wallet, right? We bridged Ethereum so we can actually use and participate with this chain because if you got no money, you don't get to play. Then we completed a decentralized trade, right? On 10K swap. And then we went and not only secured our digital identity, right? On Starknet. So now I have Voscoin.Stark and you have whatever you want your name to be dot stark right that also is an nft so we minted an nft which is pretty cool and while we wait for these transactions to complete i want to show you just one more thing because this is really the last thing you can do as this chain currently exists so i have some eth usdc i clicked on pool here and i'm going to go ahead and add liquidity all right so i'm going to go ahead and add $25 worth of USDC. Actually, let's just round up. Make it 26. No questions, no discrepancy. You know what? We're going to go up to one. 0 0.15. That's been my, my my number, my marker lately. So now we're up there. Cool. Uh, so we'll go ahead and deposit this. We're providing liquidity. When you provide liquidity, you're putting your coins into this protocol. Understand that they're leaving your wallet and you have you know a potential risk there. Right? Uh, but why would you do this? Well, you're rewarded. As long as things go smooth, right? And the protocol doesn't blow up, rug or scam or have some kind of vulnerability that's exploited, you are now putting your capital to use, right? Liquidity providers in this case earn 0.25% fee on all trades proportional to their share of the pool. Fees are added to the pool, they accrue in real time, and they can be claimed basically just by withdrawing your liquidity. As you saw me do that in real time, that's what, how you add the liquidity. Basically, you say what you want to add and you determine how much you want to add. And by standard, you're going to provide 50% of each side of the liquidity. So I would provide $27 of USDC and $27 worth of Ethereum on the other side. And finally, that transaction went through, even though it still says pending. Uh, here we can see that so I'm on pool and then I click on my pools and then you can see my liquidity position. So I've got my pool tokens, a minute amount. Uh, but anyway, it's there, it's registered and I can always add more to this or withdraw and get my coins back whenever I should choose to do so. I wanna show you one more thing and that's gonna be starkscan.co. It's a block explorer here on Starknet. To be honest, Starknet has been slow. It's been kind of buggy. It's been a little expensive, kind of sucks. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, but this is alpha, this is new and that's fine. Um, you know, I, I understand this, I I'm aware of that. Uh, so 
Uh, so cr some critical information here that you need to be aware of is you can click on your wallet address right there uh, to go ahead and find it. We can punch our wallet address into block explorers here. Okay, so this is a fresh wallet I made today. Um, and I come in here, I can see my transactions, I can see what I'm doing. This block explorer is slow to update. I did my, my test transactions earlier. Um, so it hasn't registered any of the recent transactions that I've just done. There is another block explorer you can check though. That would be voyager.online. You can punch your address in there. You can see that they found it. And if you prefer this setup, you get this information here. But as it stands, it seems to be that StarkNet is slow. And that's just kind of the summary. But I will say what's really cool here though is that they recognize the StarkNet ID and you can see Voscoin.Stark populating here in my wallet. Being a crypto nerd for a long time, I think people really kind of underestimate how enjoyable it is to just have a, a simple readable username instead of being oh yeah that's ox 792712 ab 9999999990 one other cool thing about this whole identity thing right is so <laughs> that's not exactly how i would uh picture myself but alas random generation baby but you can look up the information by any owner so now i can see starknet.id slash bosscoin.stark right and it, and it brings me here i've got no identity tokens populating there uh but it will pull up some of my activity and when i click see more more it will bring me to this voyager block explorer um so maybe they have some sort of relationship that's all i've got today guys you're on the voscoin youtube channel home of our cso that's gonna be our chief starknet officer tails Voss, the one and only the coolest the cutest doge in the freaking world she will take us to the moon in the promised land today we went ahead and set up a new wallet we bridged coins to that blockchain we completed decentralized trades with no intermediary no one saying what we can and cannot do we provided liquidity so we're being rewarded for deploying our capital we created a digital identity that also doubles as minting an nft and uh we reviewed the block explorer and really you know, by the end of this video, if you follow along, you should probably already be eligible for their incoming airdrop. But what you can do to increase your potential eligibility there is to simply do more. That's it. I'm not going to say do you need to do more, more days, more trades, more transactions, more interactions, uh, more months. That's it. It's a little boring, but you could basically just kind of be trading Ethereum into USDC into Ethereum into DAI. Be careful doing a bunch of stablecoin trades. Sometimes they just label that as straight wash trading and that's not rewarded. But uh, until there's more coins and tokens available here on this chain, well then, what is a lad to do? Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Make sure to join the Bosscoin Discord server where we're DGen airdrop hunters.